today's video is going to be a little bit special we are going to look at one of the possibly the best flocking camera in the market that no one talks about instead of doing my typical um, you know sit down and um, technical and also section by section review I thought I should just shoot a frog using this camera and then we can see um, how good or how bad it is um, using this camera to do frogging and see whether it is really one of the best frogging camera in the market Okay, I'm a little bit late now, so let's go. So when I decided to um, actively create video on YouTube and um, probably start vlogging, I have been looking around to find, you know, the perfect Flocking camera. Uh, I look at all the options from the big DSLR to the mirrorless camera to compact camera, even smartphones or GoPro. It just seems like there's not a really perfect solution that has all the things we need, you know. So, in the end, I got the Panasonic G85, which I think and I still think is probably the best or at least one of the best flocking camera option in the market consider the price, functionality, the picture quality and everything um, and quite happy about it but that doesn't stop me from wanting to get a G9 now after using it quite a bit so when I was talking to Andrew from Panasonic um, about you know the best flocking camera in the market he gave me quite a few suggestions, idea and one of the camera he mentioned is a camera that I have never thought of um, and strangely you know all those YouTube video camera forum um, article everything I read to talk about what is the best fucking camera no one seems to even mention this type of camera at all you know people talk about from the big DSLR all the way to the small GoPro and smartphone um, yeah so people looking for every possible option but no one even mentioned about this one so when Andrew mentioned to me and explained to me you know why this camera actually is pretty much perfect for flocking I was like actually that's right um, how come no one talk about it and uh, recently they have a new model release for this type of camera so he asked me hey do you want to um, yeah just borrow it give it a try and see how good it is for vlogging I was like yep sure um, yep let me know um, I'll come and pick it up and um, that's what I'm using to shoot today so most of this video today will be shot using this camera apart probably from a few scenes I want to show you this camera um, that I have to use another camera to shoot obviously um, I am really quite late now let's go let's go let's go Here yeah, is quite big and uh, it's a bit like a maze. Uh, I think we have parked the car here before, and then when we finish and come back, and we, could, we couldn't really find the car because the car park is so uh, so big, and uh, some part looks very similar and yet different. So yeah, all right. So I have to make sure I need to uh, remember where I have the car. <laughs> so the camera that I'm talking about is a Panasonic um, camcorder. It's not the professional one it's not the what's it called Eva Eva one not that one not the big one but it's more like a, a consumer prosumer type of camera uh, and the, the model is uh, the model number I can't remember actually the one I'm using right now is not exactly the one that will be on sale here in New Zealand um, but it's very very similar all the um, 
it's just a slightly different in spec. So let me get this one. So I know where I park my car. The camera I'm using right now is not exactly the one that will be for sale here in New Zealand uh, but they are very similar. The main difference is that this one doesn't have the 64GB internal memory and doesn't have the train camera which the New Zealand model will have but otherwise the, um, the lens, the optical quality, the recording uh, image format and all those features are exactly the same. So I have a job here this morning, I need to shoot some photo um, at the restaurant here in Sky City. Sky City is uh, the biggest casino here in New Zealand um, but it's not just about a casino, they have a lot of restaurants, very very nice one like this one here. So yeah, I need to take some photos for them. And um, it also has the Sky Tower here which is the tallest uh, tower in the Southern Hemisphere which is here, let me show you. Out a little bit. That was too close. I'm already a little bit late, so I will talk to you a little bit later. Now the biggest difference between the camcorder like this one and the mirrors camera which a lot of vloggers are using these days is the sensor size. So the sensor on this camera is uh, 1 over 2.5 inch which is quite a bit smaller than the typical mirrors camera um, which is you know from between micro four frame to even full frame. Um, what that means is that the low light performance would not be as good and also it's a lot harder to get that shadow depth of field effect. I'm gonna be famous. sensor doesn't um, really seem to be a problem because the picture quality is still pretty good. Um, it's sharp and um, with good color and very nice overall. So it's not a problem when you are vlogging on a bright sunny day. The problem is when you are vlogging on uh, um, you know indoor when it's not really well lit then you start to see a lot of noise and um, the image um, just not as good quality because the camera now starts to apply a lot heavier noise reduction. Um, having said that, this camera has a pretty fast f1.8 lens on it, um, at least on the wide angle side, so it kind of compensates a little bit um, and it makes the low light performance uh, better than I expected. Uh, one of the reasons why um, the camcorder is using a small sensor is that it allows Panasonic to install a big zoom lens onto the camera. So with this Panasonic camcorder, it has a 24 times optical zoom lens on it. So the widest end is 25mm equivalent and the teddy end is 600mm equivalent. I prefer if it can slightly wider, but um, the 25mm is still perfectly fine for me. And then with the tele photo and the 600 mil, it is a lot of zoom. Uh, let me do a quick demo to you. Okay. Um, all right, just switching the hand. Um, you see the apartment that is quite far away. Now, if I try to zoom in, it's 
So that is 600 mil. So this really, really wide uh, focal length range makes it a great choice when you are um, traveling. You need a wide end and also very long. If you go to say safari, then you can easily shoot the elephant, tigers, lions over there. I mean, using the camcorder, don't use your gun to shoot them. Camcorder shooting is good, gun shooting is bad. Um, so yeah, that would, that would make it a very good traveling uh, camera. So okay, I'm now hand holding the camera and shooting at 200 mil. As you can see, the image is pretty stable because my hand is actually moving quite a bit. Even I can see my hand is moving quite a bit. But the camera does an amazing job at stabilizing the uh, footage. Now let me zoom to maximum. Okay, now I'm shooting at 600 mil and my hand is also shaking quite a bit. I can see it, see my hands movement and my camera is moving. But surprisingly, the footage seems to be very stable. So I've also shot a bit of comparison footage with my G85 to show you how the, um, the image stabilizer of this camcorder performs against the G85 DOIS. So yep, I put a link above here, I think. Um, yeah, check out the link and see the difference yourself. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the image quality from this uh, Panasonic camcorder. The shutter is very good with this Leica Tacoma lens. Uh, color is also pretty good. Dynamic range may not be as good as my Micro Four Thirds camera, but it is um, good enough for vlogging. My only complaint would be the. Um, now I do see a bit of Hi. color changing. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi! Hi! Now I do see a bit of color thinking when I'm shooting some high contrast scene, you know, see some uh, ugly purple and green outline. Um, yeah, when um, around the high contrast objects. And that is pretty much the only major complaint I have regarding the image quality. Otherwise, yeah, it's pretty good. So the camcorder has a flip out screen and also has an EVF at the back um, so they can use either of them when you are shooting videos. The LCD screen is touch sensitive but I do find it's not as sensitive as the uh, other Panasonic Micro Four Third camera. I need to press it harder and um, yeah, just overall the touch interface is not as good as the uh, Micro Four Third cameras. Um, but yeah, after using a few days, I kind of get used to it, so that is okay overall. The camera has an external mic input and also a headphone jack, so if you want to, you can plug in the external mic input and the headphone to monitor to make sure the audio you capture is very good quality. There's also a hidden horseshoe mount at the top of the camera for you to mount an external mic or if you want to mount the light or anything like that, so that is very handy. But I was told the internal mic of this camera is quite a bit better than the average internal mic, you know, available on the other uh, smallish compact camera. So um, for this whole vlog, I didn't use any external mic. And today is actually quite a windy day. I'm not too sure you can see the trees. Uh, it's moving quite a bit. Let me show you the trees over there. It's moving quite a bit, so it's actually quite a windy day. And um, I don't know what the audio quality sound like now. I need to check it when I'm back to home. Uh, so let's see, hopefully the audio is not too bad. But yes, you can plug in the external mic if you want to. The autofocus performance of this camera seems pretty good. Maybe because of its small sensor, so um, it gives you a much deeper depth of field. The autofocus performance is very good, it's pretty responsive, um, I never noticed it hunting at all and when I point to between far and close object, it can yeah, change the focus pretty much immediately. It's not really obvious when I'm shooting at the wide end because you know the depth of field is pretty deep but when I'm shooting at um, 30 end then yeah, you can easily see 
the uh, image go from out of focus to in focus very quickly. Now in terms of battery life, I can record about one hour of footage using the standard battery that comes with the camera which is not amazing but not terrible as well um, but the good thing with a camcorder is quite often they have the bigger uh, bigger optional battery that you can buy separately and this is the case for this Panasonic camera as well they have a double double capacity battery that you can buy separately which would give you probably around two hour of recording time that makes it pretty good you know once you bought the optional one with the uh, standard one then it will totally give you three hour of recording time which is probably plenty Question. Is a camcorder like this Panasonic VFX one uh, really the best fucking camera that no one talked about? Um, I feel like to answer this question, you really have to ask yourself, yeah, what sort of style you want your frog to be? Is it um, do you want it to be very cinematic, you know, uh, with shadow depth of field, uh, a lot of slow motion shot? Or we will be shooting under low light quite often, you know, um, maybe indoor or even outdoor um, at night quite often. If the answer is yes to any of these questions, then I would say the um, camcorder like this one is probably not the best choice, primarily because of its small sensor. Uh, however, if you want to create frog to tell a story, and you don't care so much about you know the picture style or some of the technical things then I think you really should check out uh, a camcorder especially something like this one the Panasonic VFX one one thing I really enjoy when shooting with this camcorder is that I don't have to care about the technical thing at all um, the camera take care of everything for me pretty much you know autofocus image stabilization even just using the built-in mic the audio quality is actually not bad at all and on the other hand if you want to have a little bit of manual control you can still do it there are still uh, quite a few custom functions you know with the big ring in the front and you can plug in external mic and headphone etc so yeah I feel like it is actually a very good choice if you um, just want a very easy to use camera and you can focus on the story on the content um, and also like if you are shooting travel frog then this camcorder would be very good because of its very wide focal uh, length range uh, from 25 mil to 600 mil that makes it very flexible when you are um, traveling and shooting videos so yeah um, what do you think feel free to leave a comment below and tell me what you think do you think yes the camcorder actually could be a good choice for frogging or you say nah no I want to go for something else and tell me what you think is the your best frogging camera uh, I have also shot another video which is like a, a supplementary video to this one because in this one I actually haven't done any technical discussion or comparison or anything like that so I put together a short video that I compare this camcorder with my Panasonic G85 which is the frogging camera that I use normally um, I think the price of the G85 is quite similar to this uh, camcorder so that makes it quite a good comparison between these two potentially best frogging camera in the market 
Um, so yeah, I did quite a lot of comparison shot in that video. So check out the link below or actually above or below. Uh, I put it somewhere and please watch that video and then you tell me uh, what do you think. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, you know what you want to do. And I will see you next time. Thank you very much and see you.